On the last episode, we covered monsters far more powerful than the terrifying Tarrasque. Using the challenge rating system, we ranked and cataloged monsters all the way down from normal humans to the most powerful wizards and liches who possess challenge ratings in the high 30s. Today, we're going to continue where we left off and talk about monsters who possess a challenge rating in the 40s. More specifically, three dragons who happen to have a CR of 40. If this is why today we're going to make this a dragon episode and to further the theme, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of extra dragons that we ditched on the last episode. So without further ado, the most powerful dragons in Dungeons & Dragons. Raul Lotham, The Silent Shadow, CR 34. So now that we have a whole video dedicated to basically five dragons, let's actually take the time to go a little bit in depth. How does a dragon get to be CR 34? What kind of abilities can this guy have? Rolotham is an emerald dragon with considerable knowledge of magic. The tales say that he possesses over 400 spells with the capability to cast over 300 of them. This obsession with hoarding spells and magic items began when he first met a spelljammer vessel, which he claims terrified him. He was terrified and paranoid that one day, monsters stronger than he had ever seen, wizards more powerful than the ones that could be found on Faerun, would one day show up from the sky and would try and conquer the world. And so he began his quest to gather as many magical items as he could and hide them from the world, thinking that even if he can't use them, his enemies will not either. Rolotham is a fairly comedic character in the sense that even though he is overwhelmingly powerful, he's paranoid that there are hidden wizards everywhere out to get him and that he could die at any second from some major conspiracy. What makes him so powerful though is not necessarily his impressive size and power or his great ability in wizardry, but the fact that he is a level 19 psionic. Using his incredible psionic abilities, Rolotham uses a particularly unique style of fighting where he animates dozens of high level wounds and staves in the air, and then shoots them while he himself fights and casts spells from a different direction. He carries all of his wands and staves with him on a big bag around his neck. If you were looking for a specific extremely rare rod, wand or staff, he would probably own it. Rolotham lairs in the island of Axard, the northernmost outer isle of Rotham. Palaran Dusk, the Unseen Protector, CR 36. Palaran Dusk is an ancient gold dragon previously known as the Sun Dragon to the inhabitants of Neverwinter. This guy has saved their asses countless times. The only reason Neverwinter still exists in the way it does now is because of this gold dragon that has saved them from hordes of monsters and many, many raids of orcs. He is considered a level 28 wizard, but on the body of an ancient gold dragon, which means he doesn't just have the strength, vigor, and resilience of the most powerful type of dragon, but he can also cast six level nine spells a day on top of that. Surprisingly though, that is not what makes him unique or that powerful. What makes Pelerin Dusk what he is, is the nature of his body. He was for a long time the prisoner of a very powerful Netherese wizard back in the times of Netheril. So when the Netherese cities fell, he managed to plunder vast troves of some of the more powerful spells in the world. He used these spells to completely enchant his body and increase his power. Then fast forward back to the present day on a fateful day, he was once ambushed by a grand group of wizards who had discovered his location and almost killed him. In order to stay alive, he used all of those old spells that he knew in order to keep his body together. So nowadays, his body is barely physical anymore. He mostly appears as a translucent ethereal gold dragon. During 99% of his time, he's purely invisible and can even pass through objects and walls. But when he needs to attack or cast a spell that targets anyone but himself, he has to become physical. Because his body is barely held together by magic, he can't be physical for too long or he risks having the enchantments on his body break and have his body fall apart. The advantage this gives him though is that he can actually have enemy attacks completely go through him as if he was not there, though every time he does this, he takes one health point of permanent damage. Laren Dramagar, The Nexus, CR 37. 
Unfortunately, not much is actually known about the full extent of power that Nexus possesses. All we know is that he is described as the best spellcaster out of all of the metallic dragons. He himself is a gold dragon who is known as the second most famous gold dragon in the world. The first being, of course, the king of all gold dragons, Tamarand, though Tamarand himself only possesses a CR of 27. Now, Nexus is the inventor of most of the dragon-only spells that exist in the world, like for example, the dragon version of the spell Shield. The spell is called Breath Block, and it works just like the Shield spell does, except that instead of instantly negating magic missiles, it instantly negates and reflects breath weapon attacks from other dragons. What makes Nexus so particularly powerful when compared to other dragon spellcasters is that he has the unique ability of not just casting arcane spells, but also being able to cast divine spells. So on top of being able to cast multiple level 9 spells, he can also cast divine spells of up to 7th level. Furthermore, he has been blessed with the ability to be able to prepare every spell he knows and have access to them all the time. Basically, every single time he prepares to cast a spell, he can choose from any spell in the world and just cast it. For him, it is that simple. He was given this ability by a dragon god. He lairs in the desert's mouth mountains. Now to the meat of the video, the most powerful dragons in Dungeons and Dragons. Let's begin with Chazar, challenge rating of 40, male fiendish red dragon. Chazar would appear to you as a massive red dragon, but he is so much more than that. This red dragon is the first in the world to have achieved to completion the quest of dragon ascendancy. Now what does that mean? That means that this guy is the only mortal dragon in the world to have gathered enough supplicants to have become a quasi deity. Essentially the only thing separating him now from being any normal full-blown god is just simply the amount of people that pray to him, and that's it. It all started in a massive rebellion. See, this entire piece of land right here was all part of Unther. But in his quest for godhood, Chazar led a rebellion that freed this whole section of land from Unther, becoming completely independent, the area that is now named Chesentia. Little by little, Chazar would win incredible battles and would rule over the people of Chesentia to the point where he started to trick them into thinking that he was a god worthy to be prayed to. The more prayers he got, the more powerful he became, to the point where he started granting miracles and spells to his clerics, which further increased his veneration. Secretly, however, he personally worked at the behest of Tiamat, who granted him even further greater power, turning him into a chosen of Tiamat. All of this power combined alongside the incredible magical items at his disposal is essentially the reason his challenge rating is the way it is. Now, being a quasi deity, he has access to a particular set of skills that are unique to him. For one, he is immortal, he does not age, he does not need to eat or sleep and cannot die of natural causes. His body can be destroyed, but whether because Tiamat keeps resurrecting him or because he is now a quasi deity, he keeps coming back from the dead, to the point where he is now referred to as Chasar the Undying. Being a quasi deity, he's also immune to many magical effects, like anything that would attempt to read or manipulate his mind, any spell that would alter or change his shape, or sap its vitality. He also can now only be heard by only the most powerful of magical weapons. On top of all of that, he has improved his draconic aura and turned it into awesome aura, an aura that literally inspires awe on allies while still demoralizing his enemies. The magical items that he has in his possession, however, are what actually turns him into merely an impossibly powerful dragon into an impossible threat. If you turn your attention to the Dungeon Master's Guide and you flip the pages all the way over to where the artifacts are, you will find the one they call the Orb of Dragonkind. Now, all artifacts are unique, and they are considered to be the most powerful items in the universe, but the Orb of Dragonkind is particularly interesting. There are believed to only be three of these orbs in existence, as the blurb here says. And guess what? Chasar has one of them, which he can use to call upon any evil dragon within a 40 mile radius. Even more dangerously, however, he holds in his finger a most powerful ring, a ring called the Crown Ring of Chazar. This simple mithril circlet is engraved with draconic characters that read, quote, Through worship ascended, by fire consumed, 
a god king is reborn, end quote. Once per day, Chazor can use the magic of the ring to summon 1d4 plus 1 red Abishai. Now, for those of you who do not know what an Abishai is, uh, we have actually stat blocks for them in Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. They are CR 19 draconic monsters who follow Tiamat. Chazar has the ability to not just summon 2 to 5 CR 19 monsters, but he also controls them. Now the last and quite frankly overpowered item he possesses that I wish to speak about is the fabled amulet of supremacy. Quote, only a handful of these potent devices are believed to exist, for the ability to create them is limited to the most powerful of dragons, both in age and magical ability. Any dragon is capable of using these devices, however. An amulet of supremacy is nothing short of a masterpiece, for it is constructed of the purest metals, the finest jewels and gemstones, and the artistry of a master craft person. In fact, the jewelry value alone for such a device approaches 100,000 gold pieces. To dragons, an amulet of supremacy is just priceless. When worn, an amulet of supremacy causes a dragon's breath weapon, spells, and natural spell-like powers to operate at their maximum potential. For example, maximum damage, duration, area of effect, etc. Saving throws against these effects still apply, however. An amulet of supremacy is strictly a draconic device. If worn by any other species, death is immediate, usually taking the form of an instantaneous immolation or disintegration with no saving throw allowed." End quote. While Chassar wears the Amulet of Supremacy, his fire breath deals 240 points of fire damage and every other spell he can cast will also be maximized accordingly. Now, outside of these things, his power is pretty straightforward as you can see from his character sheet. You do have to keep in mind that this is 3rd edition, so the stats are designed for 3rd edition. However, converting 3rd edition to 5th edition is actually very straightforward and doesn't really require much. Generally speaking, most of what you see here is actually as it is, other than the attack values and the armor class. If we were to convert his armor class into 5th edition, then he would have something like 30 AC. HP is generally pretty similar between 3rd and 5th edition, except that monsters back then had less HP, so in 5th edition, Shasa would actually have a bit more HP than what it shows here. Other than that, stats are actually basically the same, again, other than the plus to hit, which are completely bloated for 3rd edition. He has a strength of 46, which is insanity, and as you can see, he can cast 9 level spells 5 times a day. Now, his horde is far too big for me to cover here, but summing all of the mixed coinage and pieces of art and jewelry together amounts for roughly 224,448 gold pieces, plus the magical items. The magical items in this instance would be where the biggest bulk of his horde's value actually lies, since many of these magical items are straight up invaluable. He has scrolls of wishes, scores of very rare armors and legendary items. He currently rules from the grand city of Erebos and is seeking to unite all of the cities in Chacentia into a kingdom, a kingdom he will then use to attack his neighbors and become a warlord god king. Next we got Invirnaro, better known as Inferno, CR 40 male red dragon. Inferno is, funnily enough, almost the direct opposite of Chasar. Chasar is a very outgoing dragon who seeks to spread its name as far as possible, its power lies in its plethora of magical items that he possesses, and in its relationships with Tiamat and the powerful military country that it owns. Inferno does not have any of that, no country, no military, no overpowered magical items. He does not like to come out, and most people don't even know he exists. But what he has is pure, unadulterated, raw fucking power. Inferno is the highest leveled sorcerer that I have seen, at least that we have character sheets for. Having not just a challenge rating of 40, but having a sorcerer level of 40. What does this mean? This means that Inferno can cast 7 9th level spells, but also 2 10th level spells, 2 11th level spells, one 12th level spell and one 13th level spell. 
Now, unfortunately, spells above 9th level are no longer a thing, having been banned by Mistra, the goddess of magic. What he can do, however, is use those really high level spell slots in order to quicken some of his other spells. And as you can see here, he can quicken spells using those high level spell slots, basically allowing him to cast extraordinarily powerful magic as a bonus action, while still being able to use his action to attack or do any of his other abilities. In 3rd edition, this actually allowed him to cast two spells in a single action, but that's no longer a thing we can do in 5th edition at all. His stats, however, are godlike, almost reaching 60 strength. That is 13 strength higher than Chazar. 45 constitution, 32 intelligence, 32 stamina, I mean, he's just unstoppable. When you work out the math in order to transfer his AC into 5th edition, you get that he actually possesses an armor class of 35. He has 1430 HP, but again, you have to consider that monsters in 3rd edition generally had less HP than their 5th edition counterparts, so he would actually have substantially more HP than that. But yeah, you can see his stats yourself. Make sure to once again disregard the bloated plus 2 hits that you see on his attacks, like the plus 77 to hit on his bite. That's just how 3rd edition worked. Chances to hit and armor classes were really large back then, so disregard those numbers. Everything else, however, should be solid. Even the damage of his attacks should be correct for 5th edition. Monsters in 3rd edition generally did less damage per hit than in 5th edition, so you might actually have to increase their damage a little bit more to be congruent. When it comes to combat gear, the magical items that he would wear into combat, you can see that he focuses hard on blocking as much damage as possible, relying on his physical might to help him resist physical damage. His necklace of absorption would block direct spells, his horn ring of shielding would make him immune to magic missiles and give him resistance to force damage, and his ring of spell turning would once again also help him against direct spells. Now unfortunately we don't really know much about Inferno as a dragon because he doesn't really seem to go out much. He has seemingly spent much of his time either sleeping or traveling into other far places of Farron. That is because he actually has an old teleportation portal in his lair that transports him to a faraway land in the continent where he actually spends much of his time hunting. He lairs in the highest peak of the Star Mounds, in the middle of the High Forest. So if you ever wondered who owned the Star Mounds and what was up there, now you don't have to worry anymore. And now you can be happy to never go there again. But yeah, nobody really knows his real name and, and those high sages that know of his existence simply call him Inferno and choose not to bother him because frankly, he doesn't bother anyone. Elminster, the CR39 wizard we talked about in our last episode, estimates that Inferno has a horde of at least a dozen million gold pieces scattered all across in different caves in the Star Mounds. He scatters all of his horde in mounts of 100,000 gold pieces in each of the caves he uses. But yeah, when it comes to personality, he has been described as lordly whimsical and not really as proud, sneering or condescending as you would think. Mostly, he's just smugly amused by unfolding events around him and he seems to view the world as an endless circus presented for his personal entertainment. He takes great delight in manipulating humans into doing things he wants, but what he wants is generally unknown. Oh, and also his fire breath deals 38 d10 points of fire damage. Just putting that out there. Anyways guys, we're gonna have to push the third CR40 dragon to the next video because this video is already running a little bit too long because I added those extra dragons. But hey, that just means more content. So for the next episode, we're going to have Moskill Jesred, the dragon that we were supposed to see this episode, and the secret CR50 monster, the strongest monster in Dungeons and Dragons on that next video. So stay tuned to that. I would like to personally thank my patron supporters Walker Motley, Zach Bowell, Rucato Fan, Barry Mascant, 5E Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Dr. Cowbell, Rusty Rain, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Doc Feeder, Brad Salazar, The Great Codini, Terry Culp, G Herc, Red Soul Knight, Baracus Law, Omega Scales, Karathas the Bulwark, and Osol for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level.
If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash Rex to support. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell button so that you can be notified whenever I upload a video. With that said, just have fun. Enjoy yourselves. Have a good week and see you guys next time.